Hello, I'm Sally Ann Ashley. I'm an abstract artist and I love everything about the process of creating art. So much so that I developed a course called Creative Shift that helps artists to navigate the shifts in their work. Those uncomfortable moments where you start to feel stuck, but you don't really know why. Hopefully my course has the answers to that. It allows you to take a really deep dive into the what's and why's behind why you create the work you create. To put the course into context, I've invited some past participants to come and share their experience with me in a short series of videos. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you find them relatable. And if you have any questions about my course, you're more than welcome to get in touch and ask me a question. You can find me on the links below and also on any of the social media platforms by my full name, Sally Ann Ashley. Okay, thank you. So today I'm chatting with fellow artist Lucy Cook. Lucy joined me last year on my course and I've invited her here today to share a little bit about her experience of the course and also the impact it had on her creative practice. So hello Lucy, thank you for joining Hi, me today. <laughs> thank you, thank you for asking me. <laughs> um, so can you start by telling us a little bit about uh, your creative practice, what that looks like, maybe how long you've been creating and the style of work you create? Sure, I'd love to. I've been creating um, the last 17, 16 years, maybe. I guess I started in uh, mixed media art collage back in late 2005 and early 2006. And since then, my art's taken lots of different roads. I've been into assemblage, uh, drawing, painting, and I, I settled into painting portraits, colorful, wild kind of portraits for uh, almost 10 years, because uh, I really loved it. I was fascinated by the face. And then I got to the point uh, early 2021 where I just felt I needed a change. And my heart had been pulling me towards abstracts for a while. I just didn't know how to get there. And so uh, spring of 2021, I took a class with Louise Fletcher, Find Your Joy, and uh, decided to give it my all. And I fell in love with intuitive abstracts, the, w the way it made me feel when I made it. So nice. that's kind of my story. And I've been doing it ever since. I've been um, learning and growing. I still draw just about, at, you know, almost every day. Um, but mostly my heart belongs to mixed media paintings right now. Okay. Um, so what drew you to Creative Shift? I had gone through, uh, this would be like the summer of, of last year, 2022, and I I was producing work, but I felt like when I first started creating the intuitive abstracts, I was just so excited to try something new. I was just going off adrenaline, I think. Um, and I was learning and I was growing, but then came a time of the middle of last year where I just felt like self-doubts just crept in. It surprised me because after all these years of being an artist, I never quite felt like I didn't know where to go from here. I was criticizing my work. I kept hearing that negative voice in my head saying, nobody likes this. Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. So when you're, when Louise Fletcher mentioned in one of her newsletters about you in your class, I thought, I'm going to take a look. And I thought, I need, I need a shift. I don't know what, what the class is about really, but something about it drew me. And I, and the thought about shifting, I knew I didn't like, I knew I was uncomfortable where I was. So I knew I needed to get past that. So something clicked and I'm so glad that I did because it's been a wonderful experience. Ah, oh, um, I, I, what you said there was really interesting. I think, I think that happens for a lot of artists. You know, when you said, um, it, when you discovered that you liked intuitive abstracts, you were so excited by it and you were just painting, painting, painting. I think w when we're new to that, I know you'd been painting your portraits, but then you'd had this like little shift almost before you even found the course. Um, um, and it, it's a case of, I think sometimes we don't, we're just so happy to be creating <laughs> that you don't stop to think. Um, I, I know this is how it's happened for me and a lot of artists. Like at first, I'm just happy that I've created something, you know, but I think 
the sort of shift you're talking about and that feeling of being uncomfortable, I think that comes a little bit further on in the journey when you're a bit like, okay, I'm doing this, but it's almost like the, what am I actually doing? (laughs) Creeps in, doesn't it? And I think that's what you were saying there about your self-doubt because, yeah, you just get to a point where it's like, okay, or it's the deeper meaning of, all right, why am I doing this? Yes. Yeah. And I don't think I, I don't think I took the time to think about the why, just that I was driven. Um, And I should also note that I had been going through a a grieving period um, in 2021. And I was, and I wasn't, I was trying not to think, I guess. I was trying to really get into my art so that I wouldn't really have to think. And then I, I was starting to feel somewhat better. And then beginning of 2022, uh, I lost two dear friends pretty suddenly. And so then I felt like I was back in that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really hard for me. I was trying to keep going in my art practice because I knew it fed me in some way. It kept me going. It it motivated me to, to get up in the morning and do things. But I also felt like I just kept second guessing like what what why why am I doing this and do people like it I mean I I I don't know if I even like it so how can I present it to someone else so just a lot of things (laughs) okay okay so you found the course you signed up what was your experience of creative shift (sighs) wow I felt like it um I felt like you know, it opened a can of something. I didn't quite know what to expect. (laughs) And at first I was like, I don't, I don't know if this is what I need right now, because it kind of deep dives you into something that I didn't, I wasn't quite, I didn't think I was ready for, but it was the why you asked the why and you asked us to delve into journaling and you had some really specific questions for us to think about, contemplate, write about. And it was hard at first. I'm not going to lie. It was difficult for me because I had buried things very deeply. But I didn't realize, or maybe I didn't want to realize, that the things going on in my life were affecting my art practice and the way I thought about my art. So the way you helped um, ask questions and kind of unearth what was going on under the surface uh, really got me it, it broke something open that needed to be broken open <laughs> as uncomfortable it was as it was the first few weeks yeah but then after that I I just felt like a growth was taking place and okay. that I needed it I needed it badly okay okay um um, what would you say, I mean, I know there was, you know, I witnessed your journey and I know there was a lot there and it's, it is that thing that, like you just said, you don't always realise the obstacles are in the way because we we get so used to living and being in a certain way and accepting many things, you know, that we just almost move around them. <laughs> And so yes. you're creating or you're doing things or living your life in a way that we're just sort of going around the outsides of whatever it is there. Um, but the truth is to get to where you want to go, sometimes we do have to sort of, you know, nudge that obstacle out the way a little bit. Um, and I hope that you went at your own pace, you know, and didn't, um, I, and I, I think I was, not everybody is ready to uncover some of those things. And I only ever say, go as deep or as you know shallow as you want to go because you can only allow yourself to go as as deep as you want to go can't you it's we can only take on what we can take on at at any one time I remember you saying if you you were very encouraging because uh and you it was almost like you held our hand through the process which was really nice we felt comforted and safe but you said something that made an impression you said if we only stay on the surface we'll only reap you know surface benefits yeah. but if you let yourself go a little deeper you'll find that there are some gems there that you really need to get to so that encouraged me to 
go back into the journal. You know, I do a little bit at a time and then come back and go back into the journal and come back. And it, it, you made things very comfortable and, and as easy as possible for us to be able to do that, even though it was something I wasn't used to doing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it felt like a safe environment to do it with you and the rest of the um, the beautiful artists in the group as well made it feel very safe. Yeah. Okay. So what do you feel shifted for you? Did you have a shift? Yes, I did. And I continue to feel shifted. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking about this uh, earlier and um, because I was having such a difficult time with my art, <laughs> I, uh, uh, week five, between five and six came along and I decided to pull out my art from that I had done in the summer, uh, paper paintings that I had just been working on. And I had tucked them away because I was, I was frustrated. And so I put them all away. Well, I ended up buying a big portfolio uh, folder and I pulled out all these pieces and I put them in there. And so, like I said, it was around week five and six and I, I put them in there. And then afterwards I looked at every single page and the way they were presented, I I just got really teary-eyed and I started crying because I loved them. I loved them, which surprised me. So uh, that was a shift for me. And I remember that evening I wrote in my journal, maybe it's not my art that needs to change, but my attitude mm. about my art. And so that that cracked me open in a way that I didn't expect. <laughs> ah, I was just about to say, so what What changed for you then? Like when you opened that portfolio, it... Two things probably. My my mindset had softened along along the few weeks about being kinder to myself. Mm -hmm. You You told us you need to be your own best friend. And I hadn't been, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. And so that made a huge impression. So mindset had a lot to do with it. And possibly seeing it, instead of tucked away in a corner between glassine sheets where it wasn't seen, I now had them presented in a beautiful portfolio, almost like what a real art, you know what I mean? Like a yeah, real art yeah. portfolio. <laughs> so I opened it up with a, maybe a different mindset and looking, it felt like looking at them for the first time. And I fell in love with the colors. I fell in love with the mark making. I fell in love with how free they were and uh, loose and colorful and joyful. And all the things I had not been feeling. Yeah. But when I saw them again, it just like, it clicked like, okay, this is me. This is my art and I need to be proud of it. I don't need to shove it in a corner. It needs to be out. Isn't that crazy though, Lucy, because it's the same work. It is. It's the same work. <laughs> so yeah. it's all right here. It's all here. <laughs> yeah. And that you, you know, I think that's a really good point you just made. You know, you bought a portfolio to put that work in and to honor the work, you know, and really give it a home. And I think that's the same. Sometimes I work with artists and they've got you know these different pieces and it's like oh is it this is it finished is it this and I always say you know just try and frame one frame one and pop it on your wall and then all of a sudden it's like oh I really like my work that really fit and so we see it with just different eyes um that yeah. was a really good thing I didn't know I don't think I knew that you bought the portfolio so that's really uh that was brilliant uh, idea it, yeah, it, it really helped a lot to see it that way. And in the sense, it was like giving it a pride of place, yes. you know, like not, uh, these are paper pieces. So these were in my mind, practice pieces. So they weren't, I wasn't going to frame them and put them on the wall, but when I put them all together as, and they made a body of work. And so, yeah, that it was, so that was a, a huge thing. That was a really okay. huge thing for me. And then since then I felt like, that healing had started, you know, yeah. like I could, I could go forward from here then. I think, um, and I, I don't know, I'm, I don't want to put any words into your mouth here, but I think what normally happens once you start this type of work, it's like, you can't go back. 
you're you're on this now you're on this journey and it's um yeah I mean how how does that feel it feels exciting to me how does it it does feel exciting and I think one thing that the course brought to me that was unexpected was you helping us I think it came from you encouraging us to do all this journaling and to ask why I'd had a difficult time before that articulating Mm -hmm. why I had stopped painting portraits and why I had moved towards these wild, colorful abstracts. So writing about it and talking about it in your live sessions every week, which, which to me were invaluable in the whole, in the whole scheme of things, um, helped me to now write about my art, posting about it on social Mm -hmm. media. Uh, on my blog, on my website, and then face-to-face talking to people about my art. So that was an added benefit that I didn't foresee, yeah. but it it's it's really helped a lot. Well, it's, I, I, I mean, I guess it's inevitable really, isn't it? Because we are, for those weeks, all you're doing is talking about and thinking about your process, all your materials, um, your inspirations, everything around it, you know, your why. And so, yeah, we we learn to speak about it with in a different language and with a different vocabulary. So it's, um, yeah, that's kind of a, a byproduct of the course, I guess, isn't it, that you, yeah. <laughs> you learn that. And your, I don't know if you were going to ask me about shift words. <laughs> okay, yeah, you share your shift words. <laughs> but... <laughs> but um, what started out as as negative words that I had chosen about myself and my art turned into something much more positive. Uh, actually, very quickly, three weeks into the course, I had I had changed the negativity and put it into something positive. And one of those words was compassion, mm. and it was having to do with compassion towards myself as an artist struggling. You know, like you're okay. You're, this is normal. And I think I learned from our lives and talking to everyone, Mm -hmm. you and all the beautiful artists on, on there that we're all struggling with these things. We're all, we're not alone in thoughts going through our head. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge factor for me in Mm -hmm. showing compassion for myself and for other artists that are going through this too. Yeah. Why do you think the words changed so quickly? What happened in those first three weeks? Because when we, when you asked us specific questions in those first few uh, weeks and looking at all sides of ourselves, the first thing that came to mind were negative things. And so I couldn't see, I had written positive things down but I they were clouded Mm. by the negativity and so when I delved into why those negative words were there um which was difficult by the way and there were a few tears (laughs) I will be honest I chose I I needed to leave it behind for my own for my own um peace of mind to calm my heart I just I knew where they had come from and I didn't want them anymore yeah. So I left them where they were and I chose I chose things that I could work towards. So focus, simplify, compassion. That's what I was working towards. And I could leave all the negativity behind. And it's changed my attitude in my life as well. Not just my art, but my life as well. So yeah. I, I feel like I'm not... A, I, I don't, I'm not drawn towards the negativity as I was before, which is a big shift. Okay. I like it. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's amazing. And and looking back now, it's not really unsurprising that they're connected because if you think back to earlier on in this conversation where you said you didn't know that the things in your life were stopping you from creating the art that you wanted, but you couldn't connect the two at the time, yeah. but you've almost done it the other way around. You've changed things in your, hang on, let me get this straight. You've changed things in your art now. And like you say, now it's affecting your life. Yes. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, I mean. Because at the time, the life things were too difficult. Mm -hmm. So the art things were where I went to kind of not escape it, but not to 
not to dwell on the things I couldn't change. Yeah. And so I went to my art, but then, then when I got stumped in my art and I couldn't change that, it was like, okay, where do I go now? Okay. So I think that's why your course came at just the right time. Cause I was stuck <laughs> mm. in both. And so you helped me to move the one, which helped the mindset mm. to help the other. Yeah. It's incredible how it works, isn't it? It just, yeah, I, lo- I lo- just love it. <laughs> but not the course scene that, um, that a course like this, and this is like no other courses. It's not a learn to paint course, learn art techniques course. Um, mm-hmm. We never had a, a demonstration on how to paint yeah. or anything. <laughs> but what was there? Because I think artists, we feel like we're we're kind of floating on our own sometimes. You know, we're yeah. we're alone so much. We're in our art spaces alone. We're in our heads. Our yeah, awful heads. <laughs> So this course is geared towards artists who, who need, who need that, who Mm -hmm. need to, I don't know, to find, to find some sort of, like, we're not alone, like we can, we can enjoy our work. We can enjoy having a creative life, Mm -hmm. not just the art, but the life and the process in art helps the life. It was just a, it's still something I'm still learning and growing from. I'm still mm-hmm. shifting in small ways and I can see it. And I'm still writing in my journal too. Are you? No. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been really helpful. Um, just what you were saying, then it reminds me of a word I use to describe the course is often that it's a self-guided, uh, it tries to, well, the aim is for you to have a self-guided practice so that you're not always looking outside for all of the answers you know you you run from your own curiosity so you know you find that and then oh that sparks that and then that sparks that and you can part of the course was learning to read your work so that you could then see the gaps in your own work and you can you know so it's um I guess yeah it's just uh building your inner confidence and belief that you know like you say I've got this it's okay I'm okay (laughs) yeah Um, and still it's something we still have to work on because there'll still be days where I'm like I don't I don't I don't know yeah I don't know if this is even worth sharing but then (laughs) then then a couple hours later I'm like no I have you know it's like this is mine this is my work yeah and if, if I don't put it out there no one will see it so it needs to go out there so and this is what I'm producing this is from my heart so how can it be how can it be wrong you know and and this is this is the thing of this is what I this is where I am today right it's that thing start from where you are but start from where you are every day because that's all we have you know so um so yeah and I go through the same still (laughs) you know it's we all do I don't think there's an end you know we are in our studios even interviews you listen to with artists who have been practicing, you know, they've had a lifelong career. They're still like, well, well, <laughs> <You know. laughs> who knows well, what's going to happen. That when I get to some of those points uh, in where I can see myself trying to trip myself up, I, I'll hear your voice in my head. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll say, um, you know, things you'll, you'll say like the things that really made an impression on me. Um, was allow, allow, allow. We heard that a lot through the whole class. <laughs> allow it. Don't stop if you have an, a, a nudge to do something. Just allow it to come through. Yeah. And the other thing is um, we made a distinction between, because we think when we play, <laughs> it's not really our work. Yeah. But you, you know, you kept reiterating the play is the work. And that so that your voice comes in my head when I'm thinking, no, this is not good. This is just play. It's like, no, this is the work. This is my yeah. art. Yeah, go with it. It's go day with is it. day. Yeah. <laughs> and when I let myself go with it, I end up with things that I, I'm i really joyful about, really happy about. So. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> um, so how I'm just thinking about how much time would you say that you committed to the course sort of per week? I'm thinking about artists that maybe some people have lots of time, some people don't have so much time, some people are working full time. What 
So what was your situation and how much time do you think you allocated per week? I I would say probably four to six hours a week. But this is this is my little reading area right here in the in my living room. So this is where I come in the evening when the house is quiet, late evening, and I stay up probably too late for my own good. But this is when I do my deep dive into my journals mm-hmm. and rewatched the videos. So that was important. Um, and maybe the four hours doesn't include the live calls because the live calls were about two hours a week, which yeah. were invaluable. So um, I hope those will continue because those yeah. were those were powerful. Those were powerful to be able to talk freely with yeah. other artists. So that's two hours a week. And then I probably did at least 30 minutes a day to an hour and a half every day. I did a little art during the course. Mm. Um, I'd go into the art space and do a few things. But um, I learned through your course that it it didn't all have to be go, go, go (laughs) with my art all the time, which I was doing. Whether I felt like it or not, I was making myself go go in there. So your course was nice because it gave me some time to back away a little bit and mm-hmm. just concentrate on the um, on thinking and writing and feeling. Um, okay. And th- that was important. So okay. I would say four to six hours, but it was flexible. You know, it was flexible yeah. for me. Some weeks more than others. Yeah. You know. Okay. Um, well, you've spoken a little bit about some of the um, tools also that well, I share what would you say was the most impactful tool or learning that you took from it? And how does that, um, like, is that still benefiting your practice now? Yeah, I think, I think there were a couple of things. Uh, one was about listening to the nudges <laughs> that if you have a, a strong nudge to do something, don't just immediately say, no, nope. no, nope, that's not right. Uh, but to go with it and and allow yourself to try something because if it's if it's something that's nagging you or if it's something maybe you had started months or a year ago and you saw value in it then 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 go for it and try mm-hmm. it. Um, the second one was about pausing <laughs> because, like I said, I was a go go go. I just don't don't want to think about things and I just need to go, go and do in my art because how can I be called an artist if I'm not in there making art? Okay. So that was part of my, my mindset, right? Like I have to go, I have to do, I have, you know, and that was not, that was not serving me in any way. <laughs> uh, it was probably making me feel worse. Mm. Like I'm producing all this, but then, but what now, you know? Okay. So pause your, your, um, yeah, one of your one of the weeks that had to do with pausing really made an effect, uh, had an effect on me. And I still to this day, I, I'm still like this week, I didn't get any artwork done. I didn't get to paint. I did a lot of administration work. I did, you know, getting my paintings together, working on the house, you know, those kind yeah. of things that a life, you have a life. And that's what you helped us to appreciate that your art process is your life. So you have to find this balance between Mm -hmm. them all um, and the possibilities, you know, just so many beautiful things. I, I can't, you know, I would talk forever. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So you've signed up for creative shift again this year. Would you like to tell us why? I did because I felt, I felt like I've just, and while I've made a lot of Im- improvements with mindset, um, I think there's just things I need to dig deeper on. Mm-hmm. And I, I I need that, maybe motivation to dig deeper. Um, secondly, I really found being with other artists who were going through the same kinds of things or learning from what they were going through in their individual things helped me to kind of see things in an all more embracing way I guess and uh that community we built as artists together is still going so we still have have uh our 
are having our, our chats once a month. But I need that also community feeling mm -hmm. that that you that you brought into the course. So I thought going into it a second time, I think it would be a little different for me because now I kind of know some of the things that you'll raise up. But so I don't have to, to deep dive into some of the things I had gone through. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll deep dive into other things that I need to that I didn't get to last time. Yes, and you're at a totally different starting point this time. Totally yeah. different. Yeah. So um, it's not always like the content doesn't, you know, the, the learning tools and the content stays pretty much the same, but the biggest difference is your next time around. You know, I used to see courses where people had gone through a few times and I think, well, why do you need to do it, you know, a few times? Surely you just do it once and that's it. But obviously now I know that, you know, you're at a different point. And then so the landscape all will look different to you this time. Like you say, some things you maybe didn't hear last time will be apparent for you this time. So and I think I started it with a such a heavy negative mm -hmm. mindset last time which you know helped which I needed to dig yeah. into but this time I feel lighter I'm enjoying my work I'm in a different mindset and so I'm curious to see how it will affect me this time I'm curious to see too <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about it. <laughs> okay, so lastly, um, if there's somebody sitting at home now and they've seen Creative Shift and they're thinking, oh, is it for me? I'm not sure. What advice would you give somebody who's thinking about taking it? I would say just go for it because it's filled with things. If you're an artist and you're either struggling with something going on inside your mindset, or if you're very critical about your work, or if you don't know where to go in your art making, or if something's lacking in your process, or if you're not getting the support you need, mm -hmm. maybe in your physical community, and you need some sort of support that way, then, Creative shift is for you because it gives you all those things. It gives, it helped give me focus. It helped me to dig into the why of why I'm doing the things I'm doing. And, uh, and, and it gave me joy that I, I had been lacking before. It helped me to find that again in my art making and in my life. So I would say it's, it's something you, it's a gift. It's a gift to yourself. So if you really want to just feel, I don't, I don't want to say held, but if you want to feel like you're being supported in your art making and want to make strides towards feeling more compassion for yourself and enjoying your artwork more, um, then it's the best class for you because you will learn not just things that you can deal with now in your art making and your process, the things that you'll be able to carry forward in your art and your life and your process. And there's nothing like it, Sally. And I've never, Aww. I've never taken a course like this. And I think it's, it's just a precious gift. And I think you're a precious gift because you Aww. give so much of yourself <laughs> to the artists that arrive here, that it, it's, it's a special place to be. Oh, Lucy. You make me emotional, you know. You... <laughs> I'm trying not to cry while saying this. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much. Thanks for taking time out of your morning. It means so much to me for you to share so vulnerably and compassionately about your experience. Um, in in you know, if I, if anybody's listening that is thinking about it and you, they can relate to you in some way, then that's that that's a gift, you know. Yeah, I hope so, because it's just like I said, it's been I didn't know how badly I needed this course. And so it came for me at just the right time. And I I hesitated just a little bit. And then I, you know, about whether or not because I had already taken courses through the year mm -hmm. and I thought, really, you know, and then part of it goes to as artists, we, we think, do I deserve this sometimes? Right. Do I deserve this? 
or I'm not bringing in the money that I should be from selling my arch. Do I deserve this? So I'm so glad that I hit the button <laughs> to do it because it was a nudge. It yeah. was a nudge. Yeah. It was something like, I think I, I think I really need this. Yeah. And then about a week later, I said, okay, I'm just doing it. I'm doing it. And, and I'm so glad I did. So I'm so you. glad you did. It was a pleasure um, to witness your journey through it. Oh. So. It was so good. Thank you. And I, I I, honestly don't know how you do it because you expend so much of yourself towards the students in the class, but it's, mm. it's amazing. We can see your love for, for helping other artists that mm. comes through big time. Mm. And so that uh, it made us all feel and, and will continue to make artists feel safe and um, connected in a in a way that we've never felt before so thank you amazing oh well I do I, you know I just love it I love I love this I love seeing growth in people I love I love seeing people do what they want to do and you know feel great about it and, and to me you know I love it that it's art but it wouldn't matter to me if whatever it was it's just somebody living the way they want to live and being the person they want to be it's like fills me up just because it fills them up you know it makes you happy yeah and I got to see it with the other artists on the course too and that filled filled me up like I could see their yeah their growth and their happiness too so that so thank it's just you. exciting thank isn't it is that everybody's doing what they want to do and making progress and just striving and yeah so. yeah it feels good and and though we all do different things that was I think amazing too in mm. the course so many artists did different things. They yeah. were drawn to different kinds of art mediums and uh, ways of working. But we all learned from each other yes. so much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was. Yeah, I yeah. can't. I can't wait till April. Yes. Well. <laughs> um. Yeah. I'll see you in April. So thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Sally, right. and, and thanks okay. for asking. All right. Take care. See you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.